Hola YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl Beauty Bell Lenoria across all my social media platforms. If you would, go ahead and subscribe to the, my channel. Go ahead and thumbs up this video. Get a conversation started with me in the comment section below about your thoughts and opinions and how you weigh in on this particular situation. And of course, go ahead and share the video amongst your family and friends. But we already know why we're here. We're talking about Jacqueline Cosmetics, what has happened, and lawsuits. FDA regulations. We're about to go ahead and get into that. So if you're ready, let's go. You're my Peter one taking me home. For one thing really to one. Okay guys, so in reference to Jacqueline Cosmetics, I think it's important that we do a little bit of a backstory because a lot of people that may be hearing the story or may be you know, just now understanding, you know, her cosmetics line and what's going on with her cosmetics line, they may not really understand how on the first day when the problem started to come out, how most people were kind of side-eyeing those people. Like, I don't know if this is an actual problem. I don't know if they're just trolling her. We're going to go all the way back to day one with Jaclyn Hill here on YouTube. It's almost like, how can I say this? It's almost like she has a root on her or someone has voodoo on her. So as we go through this video and we talk about what's happening with Jacqueline Cosmetics, I want you to let I want to let you know that this video has not been proven as fact just yet. These are my personal opinions and my personal take on the situation being a consumer of Jacqueline and her collabs with different brands. I did not purchase Jacqueline Cosmetics, so I'm not going to be able to show you guys any of my own personal experiences in reference to it. But we're going to go ahead and get into it. Jacqueline has always been known as the QVC lady of YouTube, period, point blank. You already know, even if you're not in the beauty sphere, beauty community, then certain products are starting to pop up in different locations on different websites and it sells out just like that. Anything and everything that Jacqueline Hill does sells out immediately, immediately. We're gonna go over that background of collaborations and a product selling out, which is gonna bring us to what happened at the end of May. And the fact that Jacqueline Cosmetics did not sell out, that was the first little bit of smoke for a huge fire that is just really starting to burn and pick up pace. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know, I think within the next four to seven days, you're gonna see some really huge things happen with her brand. But let's take it all the way back so this way you guys can understand. Basically, long story short, Jacqueline Hill started here on YouTube. A lot of us OG subscribers, I was one of the OG subscribers. I remember when she used to do makeup in her kitchen, in her bedroom, before she actually moved to her new apartment, before she moved to her studio. But every move and everything she did always came with hiccups. It, it never went smooth. It was always a problem. That's the reason why I'm like... Girl, I don't know if you need to go do a seance, burn some sage, pray, I, I don't know. Go do five Hail Marys. I don't know what you need to do, but literally everything she does never goes smooth. Never. Even when she first tried to move into her studio outside of her home because she said she needed a personal space outside of her home to be able to work and create YouTube content so that way home life and YouTube can start to get muddy. And I totally understood that. She had problems with that office. Uh, she was there for a little while. She wound up moving back home and filming back out of her home. And we was like, okay, whatever. You know, that sounds pretty normal, whatever. Her very first few collabs, they did have problems. And we're talking about her collabs with Whitney Lightning, who was Gerard Cosmetics, Sigma Brushes. Those were her early on collaborations. And the problems with those was it wasn't in stock. It sold out so quickly. A lot of her fans and supporters, we were just upset that we couldn't get it. And you know, that was the very first time we saw Jacqueline start to not take accountability for a situation. And a lot of the problems and issues she had, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, 50% of her problems aren't actually her problems. They're actually the brand's problems. Because it's the brand's responsibility to have stock, to have inventory, to let consumers know if it will or if it will not be restocked. So her very first few issues, with Gerard Cosmetics, which was like whitening, lightning, and of course, Sigma brushes had a lot to do with stocking of the inventory. And a lot of fans and customers being upset that they weren't able to purchase it. 
then we roll forward into her collab that she was supposed to be doing with Makeup Geek. She started to really use a whole lot of Makeup Geek on her channel, letting, you know, pretty much most of us who didn't know about Makeup Geek, a lot of us found out about Makeup Geek through Jaclyn Hill. So she started to work a little bit with Makeup Geek and try to see if it was something they could do. Now, in that process, she actually went ahead and put out a favorites palette with Morphe, um, a clan that had problems and issues, and the problems and issues then really weren't Jacqueline's fault. It was really the fact that Morphe was really unable to predict just how big her sales were going to be, so it left them shorthanded with inventory. Moving on past that, you roll into her Becca collaborations, and her Becca collaborations were, they... Her very first collaboration with Champagne Pop. It completely took the highlighter game to a whole nother level. It is still one of the very best selling, top selling products that Becca Cas Cosmetics has even to this day. The problem with the Champagne Pop launch with Becca Cosmetics, <clears throat> two things. Some of that artwork that she used with Becca has been tied back to an email that was released um, that she was communicating back and forth with Marlena and Marlena's staff at Makeup Geek. That was some of the design concepts they were coming up with Makeup Geek, but surprisingly, it showed up on her designs with Becca. So, Champagne Pop sold out. It was supposed to be a limited edition, limited run item. It sold out. Of course, consumers were kind of upset. We were kind of mad. Her fans were like the ones who weren't able to get it. Man, when is it coming back? When is it coming back? She didn't know. Becca didn't know. Allegedly. And the reason why I'm saying allegedly is because they turned around and restocked it. And to play the devil's advocate, limited edition items, you want them to be limited edition so you have something special that you're able to hold on to in your actual collection. We get that, we understand that. But we also wanna see limited edition items restocked so that way everybody who actually wants, everybody who wants to be able to go get those items has the opportunity. The worst feeling in the world as a consumer, me personally, I know, is having that item launch and it being limited edition and for whatever reason it sold out. I forgot you know, to be on the website at 11 a.m. or whatever it may be and I just couldn't get my hands on it and it's not restocking and I'm just completely out. I can't get that item. It's a bad feeling for a consumer, especially when you're trying to support you know, your favorite influencer or your favorite brand or whatever it be. It just kind of turns you off just a little bit. So her restocking champagne pop at first, I didn't have a problem with that. I know some people had already started to have problem with limited edition launches. There were a lot of companies who said, hey, we're launching this, it's gonna be a limited edition. And next thing you know, they were restocking, restocking, adding back. And consumers started to feel like companies and brands were using the limited edition tag to create a sales frenzy. I gotta go get it. I gotta go have it. I got I got to. I got to. I got to. I gotta be on your website at 11 a.m. I gotta be on your website at midnight. I gotta be standing in line at Sephora at before 9 a.m. I gotta be standing in line at Ulta. I have to. I have to. If I don't, I'm gonna have FOMO. I'm gonna have all this fear that I've been missed out. And now I'm using watching everybody else use a product that I can't use. So the tides were turning as far as how consumers were feeling and it's 2019 now this all started happening to be honest with you about 2015 2016 when consumers started to become more educated with their makeup purchases and how business is actually handled and also being able to see blatantly when a company is just going out there cash grab when they're creating a sales shortage or saying sold out when really they already have product in reserve. Because when they restock that product, from the time it takes you to make the product, get the product shipped and in your warehouse so it can be fulfilled for orders, that time frame doesn't match up with when you said you could restock it on the website. So it's a little bit off there. That leads a lot of consumers to believe, let's just say you under you ordered 100,000 units. Well, once you get to about 70,000 units, you're gonna be like, boom, sold out. So it creates a sales frenzy. It creates a fear of missing out situation. So in about two or three weeks later, you'll be like re-releasing for a limited time only. You release the last 30,000 units you have and people cram, they, they, they scamper and everything to try to get to those last units. So 
it's a win-win situation for the company, but for the consumers, it kind of leaves us off put a little bit. So that's what happened with Champagne Poppy. So it was supposed to be a limited edition and we were okay, we were fine with that. We've seen this with Estee Lauder's Heat Wave. We've seen this with Anastasia Beverly Hills and Breezy Highlighter. We've seen this with Mac Whisper of Guilt, all of which now are actually permanent in those brands. So yeah, it's, it's been problematic in the beauty community and the beauty world for some time now. It's just consumers have now got to the point to where they see through that limited edition tag and I'm not gonna rush to get your stuff. I'm gonna get it when I get ready to get it. You know what I'm saying? So moving forward, the launch of Champagne Pop with Becca was so amazing. It was bigger than they thought. It sold more units than they had actually anticipated. It just, it showed them the power of an influencer when they're really able to get their base together to actually go out and produce sales. So they had the bright idea that they going they were gonna release the champagne face palette. And again, this had champagne pop in it, along with some other colors that Jacqueline had worked on. And you know, the consumers, when we saw it, we were like, so that, why did I rush a few months ago to go buy Champagne Pop only to have it come out in this face palette? So I've already spent 30 some dollars on this highlighter. Now I gotta turn around and spend 50 some dollars on this face palette. But again, it's Jaclyn Hill. And up until this point, everything she had did had been perfect. I'm talking about perfect. And any problems they had, like for the most part, it wasn't her fault. It was Gerard Cosmetics' fault. It was Sigma fault. It was Morphe's fault. It was Becca's fault because they couldn't control the inventory only because they didn't anticipate how high her sales were going to go. So the face palette came out, sold out. Same thing happened. Um, limited edition, not supposed to be here. They kept restocking it. And we were like, bruh, stop it. Moving forward, they decided to come out with another launch with the actual collection, and it was supposed to be an eyeshadow palette. Um, they sent out PR kits, and the eyeshadow palettes just weren't right. They just weren't right. They were so bad to the fact that Becca decided to ultimately not release those eyeshadow palettes to the actual general public. And the people who had received them in PR were pretty much the only people who had them outside of Jacqueline, her family and friends, and anyone else she may have given the eyeshadow palette to. Moving forward from Becca, we now move forward into her relationship with Morphe, full loan collabing with Morphe, not just picking colors and putting them in a Jaclyn Hill favorites eyeshadow palette. No, we're moving forward into the Jaclyn Hill palette. One of the best selling, if not the best selling eyeshadow palette that, Ma that Morphe has on their records to date. And that eyeshadow, that eyeshadow palette, it changed Morphe and how consumers interact and saw Morphe. The quality of that eyeshadow palette is superb. It is amazing. This was like, what, two, two and a half, almost three years ago at this point. But we saw a complete formulation change in Morphe's eyeshadows. Me personally, I don't think Morphe's eyeshadows were all that bad to begin with. But the Jaclyn Hill palette with Morphe, it just really amped up the formulation. It was a better formulation, a better product for the consumer. It too was supposed to be limited edition. We all lined up, we all waited to get the actual palette. Some of us were able to get it, some of us weren't able to get it, and it sold out. And then it restocked, and then it sold out. And I think it did that like three or four times before they finally was like, it's done, it's over, sorry guys. But little did we know that about two or three months later, this palette would be repackaged. The Jaclyn Hill palette would be repackaged into a better container component and it would be placed into Ulta. When I say consumers were beyond pissed 
consumers were beyond pissed and they took the social media to be like i bought the original palette and it has fingerprints fingerprints and smudges and different things on it and now ulta is able to have it and i'm able to use discounts at morphe at um ulta that would be a greater discount price than it was at actually you know morphe morphe.com i don't necessarily have to pay ship it i can walk in the store and pick it up or i can order it online if my order is so much then it's a free shipping order and this packaging is a white clean type packaging and it also had the insert with the names eyeshadow names and all this other stuff in it so it was just a better packaging but they were the same price so consumers were real upset and mad about that so that was really the f <sighs> that was the first real time you started to feel the tide turning towards Jaclyn Hill her whole Becca cosmetic situation with the eyeshadow palette being complete crappy she was able to say that was Becca. She only picked this shade. That was their formulation. They chose a different factory. Either way it goes, she was able to push that back on Becca. This situation that happened with Morphe, again, she decided to go ahead and address, you know, her fans, subscribers, and consumers and let them know, hey, you know, this is on Morphe. Morphe decided since it was so great, they decided they wanted to expand their partnership with Ulta Beauty and go ahead and place Jaclyn's Jaclyn Hill palette inside of Ulta Beauty. It still left a lot of us like side eye like you started to see a pattern in the habit happen. So far, we've had it happen with Gerard Cosmetics, with Sigma Brushes, with Morphe once before, with Becca three times around, and now this time with Be with uh, Morphe. So these are five times in five instances where you start to see a habit. You start to see a pattern starting to happen. So move forward, she goes into and she decides to release the Vault collection uh, a couple of months later. And the Vault was supposed to be 40 shades that didn't make it into her original palette. Out the gate, something was wrong. Out the gate, most of the Vaults that went out were complete trash. And she did address the issue in one of her videos saying that hey we've only received one percent of them back and half those people weren't even asking for refunds well that's because when customers reached out to morphe before the vault went into ulta morphe was the only place selling it so when customers myself reached out to morphe we were told hey no refunds no exchanges you had to keep going back and forth for customer service finally they was like hey we can go ahead and exchange it out you're gonna have to pay a five dollar restocking fee different things like this so a lot of us was like forget it i'm gonna have to pay shipping to ship it back to you and you're gonna charge me a five dollar restocking fee on a 39 dollar pallet it the numbers were skewed as far as what she thought consumers were returning and refunding or exchanging versus what really was happening so fast forward part past that debacle and we move into the vault being placed into ulta beauty and this is really where the first shit show for Jacqueline actually starts because consumers started to go into Ulta Beauty and actually swatch the palettes and you know having so many fingers swatching into an eyeshadow palette the oils from your actual fingers start to actually make those formulations better than what they actually are so you had consumers going in swatching playing with the actual display and purchasing the palettes only to go ahead and start returning those things within some of them same day some of them within 48 72 hours so this is the very first tip of a landslide of shit shows that we have coming for Jacqueline, just period. We move forward into the Face Master Brush Collection that, you know, she had a name infringement issue that happened. She also had the vault artwork that resembled a lot of Becca's artwork for her Champagne Pop collection. And for the love of God, I could not understand why one prominent company would want to mimic and kind of do the exact same packaging as another company. Because a lot of customers, when they first saw the vault, they didn't think Morphe. They thought this was a collaboration she had with Becca Cosmetics. And I do believe Becca had to send some information over. Um, her face master brush set that she had had a little issue there where, you know, they may or may not have taken that idea from someone else and they got paperwork sent to them in reference to that. It was just too many issues and too many problems. So 
moving forward, it's, it's, it's a Morphe brush set. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, Morphe brushes are for the most part pretty good, but they do have mint, hit, hit or miss products, period, point blank. Whether you're getting brushes or whether you're getting makeup from them, it's hit or miss. So at this point, she goes on, she does a video about it. She has all of her little vault collection eyeshadows stacked up around her. You're sitting there looking like, because her original swatch video showed something totally different from the actual vault eyeshadows that we received as consumers. So when she was sitting there trying to talk about it, she was saying, hey, it's a formulation issue, it's a pressing issue. You know, Linda and I, Linda is the owner of Morphe. We're working on it. We're trying to get through this. We're trying to get things done. You know, just, just be patient with us, guys. We're working on it. We're working on it. And at this point, I'm going to say a good 40% of her fan base started to back away from her. Because it was, it's a pattern. It's a habit. Every time something happens, no matter what it is, you never really take accountability for it. Even in that video she put up explaining the vault situation and what was happening, when she had all those vault palettes around her, she still shifted blame. She she threw Becca under the bus when she did her, um, what was it, Snapchat that she went on when she was talking about, I didn't know that Becca was going to do this. I didn't know that Becca was going to re-release it. I didn't know that Becca, you know, used a different lab for my eyeshadows. I'm like... I don't understand how brands are still working with influencers, especially YouTube influencers who have a track record of throwing brands under the bus when something happens. For the love of God, I can't understand how that even makes sense unless it just boils down to the bottom line, which is dollars. And no matter how much this influencer is problematic, no matter how much if something goes wrong, they're going to throw my brand under the bus. At the end of the day, I can make millions with this influencer so i'm guessing that's the reason why a lot of these influencers are still able to get brand deals but moving forward we move forward and jacqueline is pretty quiet you know after that whole situation and everything happened she's pretty quiet and then we have the infamous marlena Steele situation that happened on twitter where emails and different things were released showing how she cut out of her deal. She never actually signed a deal. She actually, she kind of committed, but never really inked her name for the deal. So I can tell you any, I can tell you many one things, but if I never signed a contract, but we have no contract. She seemingly strung Makeup Geek along for months. While she was busy working with Becca, setting up her collaboration with Morphe, and she never signed on with Makeup Geek. Makeup Geek, you know, the emails were released. Marlena did take to Twitter to talk about the situation. You know, we did see pictures of palettes, of palettes, of palettes of eyeshadows, single eyeshadows that she had picked, that she had wanted, that Marlena had went ahead and ordered. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I think it was rumored that, you know, Marlena's company, Makeup Geek, may have took a million dollar or a million dollar plus hit on Jacqueline pulling out on them. You know, that whole situation, we was just like, she did try to come back and talk about it. You know, by she, I mean Jacqueline. Jacqueline did try to come back and talk about it and, you know, kind of let us know from her, her point of view what was happening and you know she was upset that someone had released you know personal emails in between her her mom marlena and marlena's staff but ultimately at the end of the day the information was already out there so yet once again she shifted the blame back to marlena and you could already tell marlena really had love for jacqueline she seemed to be very supportive for jacqueline and i think when that whole situation happened I think it just wasn't a business thing that hurt Marlena. Obviously, losing a million dollars of product inventory, you know, just being able to do what you're you're trying to do as a brand, of course, that's going to hurt. But when I watched Marlena's video, when she was talking about and addressing the situation without going too far into detail, what came across to me was that Marlena was just hurt. She was hurt personally because she had a personal relationship with Jacqueline and she just couldn't understand. She worked with her. She worked with her back and forth. You know, she literally st stood back and took the back burner to her Becca collaboration 
and unbeknownst to her at the time, what would turn out to be her huge Morphe collaboration. So that's an idea that kind of stayed with her subscribers, her supporters, fans, and pretty much most people in the cosmetics industry. Moving forward, we know that Jaclyn Cosmetics has been coming for a while now. For It's 2019. She first started telling us about this back in 2015. So now we're going to go ahead and start to talk about these lipsticks and the problems that happen with these lipsticks. Back in 2015, Jaclyn Hill announced to us and let us know she's coming out with her own brand. The world lost their shit. Everybody was her subscribers, everybody was her fan, everybody was her biggest supporter. You know, back at that point in time, it's huge for a YouTuber to be able to get a collaboration deal. It's huge for a YouTuber to be able to step out on their own cosmetics line. It's not like it is today where just everybody seems to have their own stuff. Everybody, anybody can see any collaborative brand. Back in 2015, it was just something, it was a huge accomplishment that we all cherished and championed here on YouTube. You know, being a consumer who was subscribed to her, who was a fan of her, I just championed her being able to take the YouTube platform as far as the beauty community to another level. <clears throat> she started to tell us about the brand. We got really excited. The brand was supposed to be releasing in 2017, you know, in 2016, you know, she did go ahead and show us some of the shades of her lipsticks, you know, not really show us. She would have it on and be like, I can't tell you, but it's my brand and it's coming. Or, you know, she had posted a picture, I think it was in 2016, of her vanity and on her vanity was actually the lipstick tube of her components now it may have been slightly different it was a mock-up it was, it was a working mock-up of a tube so these were the factory samples that she had received but it was clearly out on her vanity that is a picture that hit social media twitter specifically about 24 48 hours ago that you guys have seen floating around so that's the reason why a lot of people are saying these lipsticks are expired but we're going to get into that in just a moment so the components and everything were there now, with the Jaclyn, it was supposed to be Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, but something happened, the paperwork, the filing of the trademark, the agreements, the name, and different things like that, it was changed from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics to Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is evident in the fact that now her social media platform says Jaclyn Cosmetics, but the lipstick too, when you look at it, it still says JH. JH was for her original name of her company, which was Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. But now it should say JC. So I'm not understanding how they had that huge oversight to where the front etching on the front of the lipstick tubes doesn't say JC instead of saying JH. That doesn't really make any sense to me. But moving forward, you know, another email came out um, about 24, 48 hours ago where... We were told that Jacqueline ordered 300,000 units of her lipsticks and of her new collection that launched, that means it would be 15,000 of each unit that was actually ordered. And this was back in 2017. So once again, this is going to the point that these lipsticks are expired. Just so you know, lipsticks typically have a shelf life of between 18 to 24 months. When you start to use products like mango butter, which is gonna come up later, <laughs> mango butter only has a shelf life of one year. So even if she ordered these products in 2017, and let's just say she got them late 2017, early 2018, they would already be expired by now. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. But anyway, moving forward, we also had Jacqueline releasing her, you know, product launch and everything on Instagram and a lot of us was looking at it like why does these look up look like leftover Morphe pictures again you're launching your brand new brand it should have a different look a different feel a different aesthetic even though I know and understand you like diamonds you like that sleek silver you like the white we understand that you love that but why does the launch of your pictures look just like the vault collection from Morphe so when we first saw these pictures, we thought she was doing another collaboration with Morphe. We didn't realize until she told us that, no, this is her launching her brand. And I'm sitting up here like, how crazy is that? 
why would you want your brand new brand launching to confuse people and book just like another brand that already exists that had a huge problem? I would want to distance myself and be as far away from that as possible, even if that means just changing up the aesthetics. You hadn't put it out to us that yet, so it's not that hard for you to go in and change your background, redo a photo shoot. Yes, it's expensive, but in the long run, it'll make better sense whatever so we're like okay Jacqueline's releasing her brand finally after almost five years yeah okay so we waited almost five years to get this and everybody's like okay Jacqueline Hill you know Jacqueline Hill Cosmetics is coming no Jacqueline Cosmetics is coming okay name change okay whatever keep it moving so we're all excited until we realized what was launching uh, lipstick collection a nude lipstick collection. Most of us was like, nope, not gonna get it, not gonna buy it. Me being in that most of us pile over here that's like, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> I didn't I didn't wait almost five years for new lipsticks. I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna wait on that. Now, what I will tell you is when she first revealed her collection and she did the swatches, it was very weird to me the way she was swatching all the way back here with the lipsticks. That was really weird to me. and. Looking back, that was one of the very first red flags that something was amiss. But, you know, the other half of her fan base was like, yes, I'm going to go get it. We're going to get it. We're going to have these lipsticks. It's the first Jaclyn Cosmetics launch. I want it. I got to have it. I want to check out her formula. I want to check out, you know, how does it, where, how does it apply? How long does it last? They were excited. It launches. <laughs> Immediately, we started to have problems. Immediately, we have people that can't even get onto the site. Immediately, we have people who are trying to check out. It sends them through this loop. It dumps them back onto the website. It empties, empties their cart or their items that they put in their account are now showing sold out. Immediately, we're starting to see customers who are international trying to place orders only to find out that Jacqueline Cosmetics is not shipped to their country, which is weird because you had almost five years to figure out what countries you could and couldn't ship to. You had almost five years to figure out what paperwork you needed to file in those countries and here in the United States so you could be able to ship to those countries. You had five years to figure that out. So I'm not giving you not one pass on that one because that that uh, the tweets that were coming from international customers who couldn't order because it was a problem with shipping to their country and Jacqueline responded, hey you guys, I'm so sorry I didn't know, you know, paraphrasing what she said. Basically her team is going to look into it and get that fixed so they'll be able to make future purchases with Jacqueline Cosmetics and I'm like, I'm just like, girl, please, no, girl, please, no. Again, I've already explained to you and went over with you guys five different instances where she's been caught either throwing the company under the bus, shifting the blame back on the company, or what appears to be flat out lying to me, you, consumers, her fans, her subscribers, anybody who supported and bought any of her products. It's been proven time and time again over the past mm, three years. So when I started to see all of that happening on social media, I was just like, this is a dumpster fire. This is the reason why YouTube, when it comes to YouTube and the beauty community, they, they look at the beauty community as the dumpster fire of YouTube because it is always something. It is always something happening. For us to literally sit here and play in makeup and skincare and, and just do the hair and makeup to go to, to give a look, to teach, to help, for us to be so big on beauty we have some of the ugliest stuff that happens in the beauty community never mind the gaming community that has guys inappropriately sending alleged uh new pictures to minors and or the gamer who beat his wife on live without actually turning off his live stream you know you have so many other issues that happen in so many other communities but it's almost like clockwork matter of fact it is like clockwork you can set your clock to drama happening in the beauty community. And now when drama happens in the beauty community, it's just not us talking about it on YouTube. You get Fox News talking about it. You get Headline News talking about it. You get the New Yorker talking about it. You get international papers talking about it. It trends 
worldwide on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. It's just like, can we please just get back to the beauty? Can we please just, you? I, I, I don't know. But let's get back to the shit show of the Jaclyn Cosmetics launch. So basically, you have all of this happening. Now, while all of this is happening on launch day, you start to get influencers, big influencers, tweeting, hey, you know, I'm trying to order, but I was finally able to get my order through, I ordered it. Jacqueline replied to them like, oh girl, <laughs> you gotta get your PR kit tomorrow. Second red flag. Most brands and companies send out their PR kits at least seven to 30 days prior to that product or line launching because they want to make sure those influencers get their PR kits. Nothing was damaged or nothing happened during shipping or it wasn't shipped out to the wrong address. So they have to quickly overnight a new PR package to the influencer. They want to make sure that the influencer has the actual kit, whether they were able to go to a party or they're needing to go ahead and ship these packages to the influencers. But I need you guys to have these packages, these PR packages in place and ready to go ahead and start filming your video. So as you get ready to go ahead and start unboxing and using and filming your video, we want to make sure we give, we give you guys a timeline as far as when you are able to release your videos. We're launching on this date. Our first top tier of influencers are going to be able to release their videos on these top two dates. Lower level influencers are going to be able to release the next two days after them. Bottom micro influencers are going to be able to release after the big dogs have already released and did everything. We also seeing a change in climate with that. We're starting to see micro influencers or small influencers actually getting PR kits where the big million, five million, ten million subscriber YouTubers aren't getting those same PR kits anymore. So it is a shift as far as brands trying to rethink how they work with influencers here on YouTube. That's another video. But Jacqueline decided to send her PR kits out to micro influencers. Um, it was a couple of big influencers, but her first reviews that actually came out, the first people who got her PR kits were all micro influencers. She kept um, sh um, reposting them on Insta on her Instagram stories. And when I say micro influencers, I'm saying these people had less than a thousand followers here on YouTube. They had, you know. One of them had 179 followers on Instagram, 300 some followers on Instagram, 2,000 followers followers on Instagram. So these are micro, micro influencers. These were the ones who first got her PR kits. And then, of course, she started to get Raw, Be Raw Beauty Christy, you know, some of the bigger influencers, Patrick Star, you know, different things like that starting to get the actual PR kits. And this was a little earlier this week, late last week. But... Let's go back to the actual launch. So the makeup sales it does not sell out. It's still not sold out. And it's about six days in at this point. Today is June 12th. So we're about six days into when people started to actually receive their products and different things in the mail. Okay, so basically what happened <laughs> and what went on was people started to receive their packages in the mail for this new lipstick collection where they order the single, the trios, or the huge, you know, actual collection. They're starting to get these things in the mail. And the first rumblings we start to hear on Twitter is, hey, I got my lipsticks. They seem to be melted. There seems to be some type of fuzz on them. There seems to be like little holes or something. This is before they even started using them on their lips. And Again, the reason why a lot of us is kind of like, eh, eh, not necessarily putting too much stock into those first reports that came out within the first 24 hours is because Jacqueline has always had problems from day one. So because she's had problems from day one, she's been trolled. I don't know if it's any other influencer on this platform in the beauty space, in the beauty community, who has more trolls than Jacqueline Hill. Like they literally go out of their way to try to sabotage this girl. And it is pathetic, but it's the truth. So those first reports that started to come out, we were like, huh? 
Uh, the drama channels are already speculating that, you know, hey, these lipsticks may be repurposed from the Vault Collection with Morphe that they're going to put back into the Jaclyn Hill Collection and launch for her. Or on, under her own brand, that is. Or these are the lipsticks you ordered two years ago that's expired. But what, what's going on? And the little black dots on the lipsticks. Let's address that first because... The little black dots, a lot of people said it was just packaging as far as manufacturing. You know, when you pour the lipstick into a mold and different things like that, maybe the air got caught and different things like that, and that could create those micro holes. But some of those holes weren't necessarily holes. They were literally like black spots, discolored spots on the makeup, which looks a lot like fungus growth or mold growth. And that would either happen if the lipsticks themselves were contaminated during manufacturing or they sat somewhere in a warehouse on a shelf and expired. So either they're contaminated or they're expired, period, point blank. And then we started getting pictures of the little furry hairs, the little fuzz things that were on them. And again, you know, people were like, what is this on my lipstick? And then we started getting pictures of people actually using their lipstick. And something in the lipstick is dragging and scratching across the lipstick. It feels rough on the lips. Come to find out what they said it is, is going to be the mango butter. The mango butter either wasn't blended correctly in the formulation, which when it cool, it's a lot of it solidified into these little hard balls that are now within the lipsticks and can feel scratchy on the lips. But that isn't even the biggest problem. The the, the, the that even <laughs> the, the the your inability to correctly blend your formula together that 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 it's a problem. But that isn't even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is day two. We started to see people that are literally having little shards of plastic in their actual lipstick. That is a contamination, period, point blank. That means some part of the machine or the equipment that was used in making this is running at such a high rate that it's starting to shear and shave off. And those shearing and shearing, sh shearing and shaving off of particles is falling into the formula. And it's being pushed and made into the makeup. That's a contamination. And if you go to the FDA's website, yeah, that's a contamination for cosmetics. And then you start to see more and more lipsticks popping up with these little white furry hairs on them. Well, make in the makeup industry, you cannot actually touch the bullet of a customer's lipstick. All of that is handled in a safe, secure, sanitary type of situation. All of the workers either use rubber gloves or neoprene gloves, or they can use rubber gloves, neoprene gloves, or the vinyl gloves, but most people doesn't, don't, don't use the vinyl gloves anymore. But those are the gloves that's used, and typically they're the blue gloves. Um, for anyone in quality, for anyone in production, they use the blue, the blue gloves. Typically, when you see the sanitation workers inside of a warehouse or a factory, um, inside of a factory as far as production around a production area, they're wearing the black gloves. Typically in the actual warehouse where the forklifts are, where the boxes, where the packages are already shipped and done, they don't really wear gloves back there because that's not a requirement. And I'm telling you this because I worked at two factories. One factory has been a food factory. The other factory has been a battery plant. So I'm going to tie all that together in this batch code situation. But before we get into the batch code situation, we've seen mango butter creating little hard balls in the actual lipstick tubes. We've seen pieces of plastic being pulled out of the lipstick tube. We've seen those little white fiber hairs on the actual lipstick tube. And one girl reached out to Jacqueline and tweeted to her um, about four days ago, five days ago, and this rubbed me the wrong way, the wrong way. And this is where we're about to get into the whole litigation and the lawsuit because she reached out as a consumer to a brand and let them know, hey, I ordered a product from you. There's a problem with this product and here's the actual product. True enough, two days earlier, she did go ahead and put swatches of that on her Twitter and say, hey, I got these in there. So buttery, so creamy, I love them. That's swatching something. I could do that a million and one times, grabbing something and swatching it and doing different things like that. But I could swatch this on a Monday 
And on a Tuesday, I decided to put it on my eyes and start putting it on my eyes. And all of a sudden, my eyes started burning. They started turning red. I started getting little bumps. I could have an allergic reaction to this. We're not really going to know until I actually start to use the product. So she responded back and she let her know, hey, something's wrong with these lipstick. They're a little scratch mark. They're a little hard balls in it. And she put pictures and different things up of it. Well, Jacqueline decided that in all of her education, training, time on YouTube, and experience here on YouTube that as a brand owner, she was going to respond back to a consumer on a public platform and go back through this girl's Twitter history and say, two days ago, you used it, you know, you swatched it, you put up swatches, you said how much you loved it. And now you're saying, hey, it's a problem. Well, it, it's going to look like that if you have dry lips or if it's not fresh from the factory out the tube. Problem with that is, as a company, you cannot respond on your social media to one of your consumers in a derogatory, hurtful fashion or manner. You set yourself up for litigation. We've seen that happen with a lot of companies and brands that they fire back at their customers on their Instagrams, you know, on their Twitters. And most of us are sitting there like, what are you doing? How are you, why are you talking to your customers like this? Outside of customers having problems or issues and redirecting them back to the email address that should be located on your website, all of the unnecessary back and forth we've seen between brand owners in the past two years on Instagram or Twitter are, are pathetic. Are pathetic. It sets them up for lit litigation, and I'm just so surprised no one has actually taken the litigation route. If a company with millions of subscribers, or it could be hundreds of thousands of subscribers, if you have a problem and you go to that company and you're not being malicious, facetious, or anything like that, and you let them know, hey, I have a problem, what do I need to do, or can you help me? If you as the brand owner or company fire back at that individual and your fan base and followers go on and start attacking the person, you're causing anguish, you're causing anxiety, you're causing a situation that is pain and suffering, you're also creating a cyber social bullying situation. Girl, when I tell you all of those are trigger words and terms that lets me know you need to go get an attorney. For real, for real, for real, ASAP right now, yesterday, tomorrow, today, go get yourself an attorney because, yeah, no. Of all the frivolous lawsuits filed here in the United States, it's the reason why a lot of those lawsuits actually need to be filed. And in this particular situation, I'm not an attorney. I can't give legal advice, but I would definitely suggest that she reaches out to someone to see what her options are because that was pathetic. And... A brand or a company deciding or an owner who doesn't have enough common sense to realize when you become a brand owner or a company owner, you're no longer responding as yourself. You're responding as the face of, so you are a representation of the brand. So if you have a shitty response, your company is shitty. Moving forward. So next we start to see issues of people getting their lipsticks and you know they're melted and different things like this or they're breaking at the base and a lot of those complaints when they first started to come out were coming out of texas well you're shipping lipsticks that by the way should be temperature tested up to 130 degrees fahrenheit but you're shipping them to texas i think it's a little over 100 some degrees when those packages were getting delivered to texas here's the thing about it most trucks with FedEx, UPS, DHL, UPS, those trucks are loaded 3, 4, 5 a.m. And then from there, they leave the facilities and they start their routes to go ahead and deliver your packages. So if it's already 80, 85 degrees at 4, 5 a.m., when the driver is leaving the facility to start his route of delivering his packages, your package with your lipsticks could literally be sitting on that truck from... 4 or 5 a.m. when the driver leaves the facility until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 p.m. whenever he gets to your door to actually deliver your package. So, excuse me, all day this package has been on the truck with the driver and experiencing extreme heat. But there are a lot of companies who are able to ship emollient products, foundation, concealers, lipsticks, 
liquid lipsticks and not have any problem. I hadn't, I hadn't had any problems when my Dior lipsticks came here to my home and I'm in Atlanta. And when I received my Dior package last year, it was like 102 degrees. And that package actually sat outside for like three or four hours because I was gone. When I came back, it was on my front porch. I didn't have any problems with my Lancome products. I don't have any problems with my Ulta orders outside of them breaking my stuff. <laughs> but when I receive my Ulta packages, it sits on my front porch for a few hours until I come home, unless I'm already at home to go get it. I've never had that problem with my Maybelline lipsticks. A lot of people are also not aware that when it's very hot outside and you bring your cosmetics in, first you need to go ahead and open that package so the heat starts to dissipate. And you should probably take them and lay them out on a flat area in a cool, dry area to allow them to cool down. Or you can put them on a plate and pop them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and pull them out and just put them, you know, on your desktop and let them <laughs> and let them come up to room temperature and they'll be fine to use. A lot of people don't know that. And I think that that is something that Jacqueline should have put out. She should have addressed that. Hey guys, because of the heat, whatever. I mean, it's complete BS because other companies don't have that problem, but whatever. She's a new company, she's a new brand. She has a different way of dealing with her customers than the traditional big boy houses. We get and understand that. But I would think common sense would be like anybody in your management team and your PR team on the company side should just be like, hey, just go ahead and let them know, just pop it in the fridge for a moment. You know, in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, you know, let it cool down. Never did that, never said that. Moving forward, we start to see people pulling actual hair out of their lipsticks. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the very first video I saw on Twitter of somebody pulling hair out their lipstick, I thought it was a troll. I did, because of the angle of the lipstick and the way they were pulling it, you really couldn't tell if it was just something they had just stuck into the back of the lipstick and the angle, angles are everything in 2019, we know that by now. So, you really couldn't tell if this is somebody trolling her or is there actually hair in this actual makeup? And then you start to see other videos coming. And the other videos that came with the hair and the actual product, I was just like. And then Raw Beauty Christy did her video where she compared the packages she purchased with her own money from Jaclyn Cosmetics to the PR kit that she received. And then you saw Patrick Starr post on his Insta stories about the PR kit. His brother or assistant was in the background separating the ones that had holes in her mold and the ones that had hair. Jacqueline did address the hair fibers <laughs> and one of the most blatant, blatant lies to date at this point. There's no allegedly about that. She flat out lied to her consumers in reference to that because there are pictures and photo albums of her photo shoot on her actual Instagram for Jacqueline Cosmetics where she was at the factory and actually wearing the blue gloves. She was touching her face in full makeup, in jewelry. And I understand that's just a photo ops fo fo picture. Anyone who's ever worked in manufacturing, warehouse, or anything in or around food, you know you can't have makeup on like that. You can't have fake eyelashes on like that. You can't have all that jewelry and stuff on. And you definitely aren't touching and picking up products and then touching your face and going back to touching the products. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't happen like that. It's just not possible. So moving forward, that whole situation, Jacqueline decided to say that her lab that she used, used furry fuzzy gloves, white gloves. And that's how those fibers got on so many lipsticks. And I was sitting there like, I have a little, have a little bit of a law background, just a little bit. And the legal part of me was like, did this brand owner just admit to knowing that there was a problem and that her products that she's selling to the general public are contaminated? Anything that is not supposed to be on that product that appears on that product is a contaminant, period. Last time I checked her ingredient list didn't include white glove fiber hairs on the actual box. So there should be no white glove fiber hairs on the actual lipsticks. That is a contaminant. So you know that you have a contaminated product. You know 
that you're selling this contaminated product to the general public and you still haven't did a complete and total recall of said contaminated products because you use the same batch code across all of your lipsticks no matter what the shade was every time you change an ingredient in an actual formulation to produce a different color a different um texture or whatever it may be it typically will come with a different batch code because your batch code allows you to know the ingredients and everything that went into it so if something happens and you need to recall a portion of your product back to your warehouse you know i need to recall the products that were produced between 7 15 a.m on the 3rd of june and 8 59 p.m on the 10th of june i need to recall all of that back but if everything across all of your lipsticks and across everything on your brand has the exact same batch code how do you know if you're pulling items that were just produced five days ago or if you're pulling items that you produced back in april or are you pulling items that you produced back in december so if these lipsticks aren't expired if these are actually newly produced lipsticks let's just say you may have went into production and started your production around august september last year once you finally got your batch and your colors and everything correctly so let's just say from September last year all the way into June, you're gonna have to recall all of that inventory because your batch codes don't show anything different. They don't have anything different. It's not how batch codes work in manufacturing. This blatant lie is what brought Marlena Steele back into the actual situation. She basically read her to filth, basically. She was like, I, I I, can't believe, long story short, I can't believe you would blatantly say this to your consumers. It's, it's, it's almost like, paraphrasing what Marlena said, it's almost like either your consumers are this stupid to believe what you're saying or you're that stupid to believe they're going to be stupid enough to believe you. She also went into detail about the fact that no factory and again i told you guys i've been in that particular part of my career working in warehousing and factoring manufacturing so i've never been in a factory never been around a factory i've never seen or heard of any factories whether it's food whether it's cosmetics whether it's um animal food or packaging up for mcdonald's it, it, it doesn't matter i've never heard of any factory using furry gloves because that puts a contaminant in your production area and any and all loose items such as furry gloves create dust and dander and fibers that can fly off as you're moving doing stuff and that can always get into the product the food or whatever it is you're doing so absolutely no factories use that i do know that know that marlena reached out to two other people i think one of them was kevin james bennett and they were all like, nope, never heard of that. Nope, never heard of that. And then you had some influencers actually getting their actual lipstick bullets. And you could see condensation moisture on the top of the actual bullet. I would just flat out say you definitely need to go ahead and return those and get a refund. Period. Point blank. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Mainly because anytime you have a dry, damp environment that's closed off, you create a situation for bacteria and mold growth. I, I, I can't even understand how that's even appropriate or okay for anyone to want to keep that type of lipstick. But again, I'm not Jacqueline and that's not my Jacqueline Cosmetics. But I will say that one of the issues and problems that we had, even with her trying to debunk the whole white glove thing and then social media going back and pulling her PR photos and everything and the video and stuff of when she was in the factory, you know, showing her with the blue gloves, showing the worker behind her with no gloves on. It, it, even if you can get past all of that, pretty much long story short, I personally believe we have a lawsuit coming. I really do think everybody who has purchased the product, who's been reaching out to Jaclyn Hill, Jaclyn Cosmetics in reference to the problems with their products, whether it be the shards of plastic, the hard beads that are found within the product, the fibers being found on the product, the hair in the product, the product breaking and melting, your product having those like just weird nuances and everything's happening. I really do think you guys, as you're reaching out to the actual brand, you also need to go ahead and reach out to the FDA. You need to go ahead and at the FDA. You need to go ahead and CC the FDA. 
you need to go ahead and call them and see, hey, do you guys want me to send you in what I received from the brand? And I also say you also need to CC and act the Better Business Bureau. Because right now, the situation that's happening has gone beyond your personal feelings and beliefs or how you feel about Jacqueline, her brand, or anything like that. You have a contaminated product out here in the market. We just saw last night on Twitter, uh, two young ladies put up photos. One young lady pull up, put up a photo where she had an allergic reaction. And that could be to one of the ingredients to why she had an allergic reaction. I'm not saying it's because of what appeared to be mold or contaminated on the lipstick. It could be of any one reasons why she had that allergic reaction. Another young lady put up pictures of her lip being cut from actually using the lipstick. What I will tell you guys is you need to reach out to the FDA. You need to reach out to your Better Business Bureau. It is illegal to have contaminated products on the market that you know are contaminated and you're still selling to the consumers. You still haven't shut down the actual website to make sure no further sales can be made. You still haven't issued a recall because I could have ordered two lipsticks and one lipstick be fine and the other one be contaminated. Now, if I'm trying on this lipstick that's contaminated and I take and just wipe it off, not actually soap and water wipe it off, but I just take just something and just wipe it off and I go try on the non-contaminated lipstick, odds are I've just cross-contaminated both, both products. So I definitely believe in the next coming days, I think you're going to get more issues and problems coming out about the actual lipsticks, the bullets themselves. I do think that you're going to get more trolls coming because some people are miserable and they just like to just dump gasoline on the dumpster fire. But this whole situation is a public health safety issue. It is a public concern. It is a legal problem because anyone who has purchase a contaminated product and the company knew they were selling you contaminated products and they did not recall the product they did not shut down sales and they still haven't reached out to you in reference to your contaminated purchase prior to you actually using that product or giving it to your family your friends your children or whoever you may have bought it for they're 100 liable in that particular situation I'm telling you guys, I've seen people starting to reach out to the FDA. A whole lot more of you guys need to reach out to the FDA. Um, the cosmetics industry isn't as heavily regulated as the actual food industry, but there are issues that the FDA has laid out on their website that are direct violations of the Food and Drug Administration. That's pretty much where we are at this point. I'm thinking it's going to be a lawsuit that's coming. And I think that's what's the real big thing that'll be happening here in the next few days or before the end of June. I think either it's going to be an individual lawsuit that's coming where one consumer is going to go get an attorney and they're going to go ahead and file litigation against Jacqueline Cosmetics and also Jacqueline Hill since she is the brand owner. Or one attorney is going to be smart enough to reach out to all these people and he's going to group and gather them together. At any time you have a group of consumers who have been sold contaminated or expired products and the brand and brand and the brand knows that they're selling contaminated or expired products and that attorney gets that group together you set yourself up for a class action lawsuit and it definitely needs to happen it definitely needs to happen because at this point I don't want to see anyone else with hairy lipstick. I don't want to see anyone else putting something on their lip and it's dragging across their lip. That girl Shay video in reference to that girl Shay XO video in reference to her Jaclyn Hills purchase and you know her little rent and everything that she went on was 100% spot on. I don't really have a rant like that for you guys because I didn't purchase the product but just being on the outside looking in to what's happening on social media and people that are posting it in YouTube videos and on you know Twitter open up their packages hey this is what happened this is this is real this is happening to me my heart goes out for you guys I definitely want you guys to go ahead and reach out to Jacqueline and Jacqueline Cosmetics, they did say that they were going to refund your entire purchase and send you out a new product. And I'm like, what type of lie is that? 
under, under, in, in, in no circumstance will any company ever completely refund your product, refund your purchase, and send you a whole nother product. The only time a company would ever refund your complete purchase and send you out another product is if they knew something was wrong with that first product and they're trying to get you to quiet down, simmer down. If I could go ahead and quickly address it, I could prevent it become, from becoming a bigger problem. I'm telling you guys, for those who have purchased the lipsticks, do not, I repeat, do not under any circumstance decide to do a giveaway with those products. It's called the chain of custody, and you now become liable for giving another consumer something that was contaminated or expired. So you could be in just as much legal trouble as Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Cosmetics. So don't do any giveaways with these actual lipsticks. Definitely go ahead and reach back out to the brand and try to return them if you can. I know some of you guys were saying that you had to pay a restocking or you had to ship them back yourself. It was different problems with actually trying to get them returned back to Jacqueline to either get them exchanged out or get a refund for them. Keep working with them. Um, definitely reach out to the FDA and the, better, F, the FDA and the Better Business Bureau and an attorney. I definitely would do that as well. And I'm going to end this video by saying no one wants to see Jaclyn fail. No one wants to see Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics tank the first year out the door. But absolutely no one is going to stand here and allow any company. I don't care if you're Dior. I don't care if you're Morphe. I don't care if you're Maybelline, CoverGirl, or Jaclyn Cosmetics. Absolutely no one is going to stand by in 2019 and allow you to sell expired or contaminated products. As, as, as Consumers nowadays are a whole lot smarter than that. We are a whole lot more savvy than that. That's not going to fly. For you guys who didn't receive any defective products, you know, you're not having any problems with your lipsticks, you don't have the little balls, you don't have the little fibers, you don't have hair, they're not melted, they're not breaking. I'm happy, I'm so happy for you guys that you were able to get a product that was not contaminated nor possibly expired that we don't know yet. So far, today is um, June 12th. It is... 8 14 a.m eastern standard time here in atlanta and so far as of yet we haven't had a recall on the products and we don't know if they are actually contaminated or we don't know if they're actually expired but everything looks like either or either they are contaminated she confirmed it from her actual brand page or they expired that part we don't know yet but I will tell you to use your products at your own risk. Just know that it's a huge risk out there and I want you to protect yourself. Again, sound off in the comments below. Get a conversation started with me. Let me know what are your thoughts. Let me know if you feel like we're all overreacting. Like, come on guys, you know, it's her first launch. You know, you know it's gonna be some problems and issues. They'll work it out. It's just, it's just the kinks. We'll get it worked out. Or are you like, Ciao. Honey boo boo. You know, just let me know. Anyway, YouTube, you already know. I'm your girl, Beauty by Lenore. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. And thank you so much for coming to watch my video. And again, I don't care if you're watching me in the morning, afternoon, evening, late at night. You know, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing on YouTube. I'm just happy you came to spend some time with your girl. And of course, thank you so much. And until next time, you have a beautiful day.